joining us here in the studio. I'm very excited for our next guest. He is Canada's voice of classic rock. Let's give a huge round of applause to Jeff Woods. Guys are great. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I'm excited. You have a new book. It's your first one. It is. Radio, rec Records, and Rock Stars. It's true. That's cool. Can you talk a little bit about it with us? Totally. I'd love to. Uh, a Labor of Love. I didn't think I would have a book until my really older years. Right. As is often the case. But I thought, why wait? A lot of our uh, legendary rock stars, as you know, are starting to pass. That's true. Those that, that were born sort of post-war, mm -hmm. that came up through the 60s, especially those out of Britain. Right. Who would have thought David Bowie would die so young? That's true. I was just um, getting into finishing the David Bowie chapter in the book when he passed, oddly. Wow. Yeah, I spoke with David a couple of times in the yeah. early 2000s. And he remains, and I, I said it long before he died, uh, he remains my favorite interview because he was so open and kind okay. and obviously artistic. Right. So he's in there and about 29 other artists that uh, highlights from the interviews I did with them over the years. Right. I'm curious about David Bowie because I've seen a lot of his interviews. How is his um, like off camera or even just kind of like you guys just chatting? Like is, is he a funny guy? Is he like just... Um, you know, as intellectual and as artistic and as outside as he can be um, outside meaning you know highly creative and yeah. he's just a regular guy a regular right. bloke as it were from england <laughs> and he's actually really fun off camera and off mic he's even more fun than he is on and on he's perfect right in fact i was nervous the second time that we met up oh. they invited me down to new york to do um, a movie theater uh, event so fans around the world would be in a movie theater, right. and on the screen would be David, and beside him would be me, and I was the oh, moderator. Cool. Okay. So I would say, you know, John from, probably wouldn't, his name probably wouldn't have been John. Right. Uh, Rico from Sao Paulo, South America, what's your question for David? Oh, I see. So, so just before we went live, I saw Leslie Stoll from 60 Minutes sitting there, and a variety of other, you know, important figures in media. Right. And I thought, wow, this is something. And I got a little nervous, and he sensed it. And he said, Jeff, let's just get out of here, go to the pint for a, to go to the pub for a pint. Oh, that's so cool. He was obviously kidding, but it, it <laughs> loosened me up. Yeah. Right. Yeah, just a nice guy. That's awesome. Yeah, it was. Aside from David Bowie, is um, there an individual or even a band that you came across where you just, it's a story that you love to tell, and you every time you tell it, it's just like... There's so many, but Joe Walsh of the Eagles. I was a fan mm -hmm. of Joe before he became an Eagle. He was in a great rock band called the James Gang, okay. who toured with the Who. Mm -hmm. And he became friends with Keith Moon, the drummer in the Who. Right. And Joe told me extensively stories about how Keith Moon chose him oh. uh, to be his buddy, his, his partner in crime, right. as it were. And, uh, and they went down some of the crazy same roads. And so there's a lot in the book about mm -hmm. that. And a lot of uh, stories of redemption, particularly with Joe Walsh, in that okay. he went off the rails, right. as it were, in the partying of rock and roll's heyday, and how he came back from that mm -hmm. and survived and toured with the Eagles to greater acclaim than ever before. Right. That's a great story. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's really cool. Thank you. Now, is there a story or you know, part of an interview where you're just kind of taken aback, thinking like, wow, I can't believe that happened to you in your career, or I can't believe that must have been something made up, or? I'll tell you this. There's one uh, interview in the book that's not a rock star. It's the mother of a rock star. Oh. And that um, took me aback in that um, Jeff Buckley's mother had not only lost her husband, right. they were estranged at the time, but mm -hmm. still, um, Tim Buckley was an artist in the 60s and uh, and accidentally overdosed, right. legitimately accidentally. And then she had this son in Jeff who became this incredible artist signed to Columbia Records where Springsteen and Dylan had been signed. So this was a, a great hope. Mm -hmm. He's the one that, you know, today is, is timely. He's the right. one that made Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, probably the most famous version outside For of sure. Leonard. And so I got to interview and then subsequently meet 
uh, Mary Guibert, who was Jeff Buckley's mom, who oh. talked about his death. He accidentally drowned in a tributary of the Mississippi River right. in his 20s. Uh, he was a young man, and he made one of the most beautiful records on earth, which is called Grace, mm -hmm. and I highly recommend it to anyone oh. listening. Wow. Awesome. So we can pick this up. It's, it's in uh, stores now. A number of places. That's awesome. Yes, it's exclusively downtown in Toronto at uh, Indigo, Young and Eglinton, cool. great street-level shop. Mm -hmm. It's at the Oshawa Center in Oshawa. And I'm working on some other stores, Amazing. Indigo and Chapters. But the place to get all the information about it is jeffwoodsradio.com. Awesome. Cool. And you not only have, you know, released this new book, you've got a couple of shows um, yeah, on the, air? Yeah, Arlene, yes. Spin-offs in that uh, the book's out. Now what? So right. Records and Rock Stars became a podcast which is available on iTunes for free. Mm -hmm. And I interview bands largely who come on and play. Oh, cool. And the other thing would be the Reconciled Rockstars radio show, which is gathering affiliates as we speak. There's <laughs> one in Barrie, Ontario called Rock 95. Awesome. Saturday and Sunday evenings. And then uh, 917 Giant FM in the Niagara region also okay. carries it. It's an hour long um, sort of discussion, narration around music with lots of great songs mm -hmm. that you don't often hear on the radio. Cool. Yeah. I'm curious, how did you get started in interviewing rock stars, or were you a musician yourself, or is it just I was a, I was a mediocre musician who realized my limitations and got into radio instead. I okay. decided to be on the other side of it and play the musicians that I love so much. Uh, I took a college course oh. in the uh, early 90s. Mm -hmm. No, in the early 80s. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so long ago <laughs> at Fanshawe in London and took okay. a two-year diploma course and, right. and, and then I went right into radio ah. and I've been there ever since. Was there a uh, radio personality that you kind of were drawn to or yeah, is it there just was. something? Okay. I don't know if you know the name but he was very instrumental in the early days of uh, Q107 Toronto, mm -hmm. uh, late 70s, early 80s. Um, Bob Makowitz okay. is his name. He was the ultimate storyteller and had the most passion for new music right. and the most knowledge of older music. And that's what inspired me to do what I do. Wow. Yeah. Did you have a chance to interview him or chat I, with him? I, I chatted with him many times okay. thereafter. He actually offered me a job to run a radio station many, many years later, which I respectfully declined and, and suggested some other people right. who helped him out. Okay. Nice guy. Cool. Still around. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any artist, um, either today or like just um, kind of not retired, but like an artist that you haven't talked to yet that you're kind yeah. of pitching? There's a short list. Tom Petty, okay. Bruce Springsteen, uh, and an artist that's newer, but he's had six or seven records out, Ray LaMontagne. Oh, okay. Uh, incredible records. Wow. He put one out recently, April 2016, called Ouroboros. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect record. Oh, nice. The voice is going to make you melt. Yeah? Yeah. I promise. <laughs> is there an artist that um, is that you find is um, kind of overlooked that you would hope to? There's so many. Um, top of my head, Ray LaMontagne's overlooked. Okay. A guy who's had six or seven albums yeah. out of the highest quality of recording and performance, yeah. and yet he has the last song in his latest album. The the lyric is "Ain't gonna hear this song on the radio." Mm -hmm. I've played it in the radio, Amazing. just to, you know. But he knows the limitations of modern media. Right. And outlets like this one and mm -hmm. outlets like certain radio stations, thank God we've got those or else we wouldn't hear a lot of this stuff. So there's one. Go to Ray. If I okay. can recommend one thing, that's him. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here, It's my Jeff. pleasure. What a great set, and, and, and you look great. And oh, so do you. You turned me on to a great band, so thank you. Yes. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you so much, Jeff Woods. Make sure you guys grab his book at Indigo and probably many other, uh, many other stores.